Hey there students, um, welcome to part 2 on uh, learning how to graph piecewise defined functions. So in part 1 we went over how to graph a uh, piecewise defined function consisting of, of two functions. In this example we're going to be going over uh, an example consisting of uh, three functions. Okay, So let's write down the, uh, the question number 2. In this question we're going to graph uh, the piecewise defined function f of x equals squiggly bracket um, one third x minus one if x is less than or equal to zero one if uh, x is between zero and uh, three and then um, one third x plus four if x is greater than or equal to 3. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and graph these. So what I'm going to do first, so I'm going to label my functions. Uh, this is function number 1, function 2, and function 3. All right. Now let me create a coordinate system, and I'll tell you why um, I labeled my function 1, 2, 3, uh, Person. So that is my coordinate system. So uh, now I want to determine where the partitions are or where my functions jump from one um, one region to another, from one function to another. So what I do is I look after the if. Sometimes you might have commas in certain books, but the inequalities on the right side tells you where each function is restricted to. So if you notice, first one you have a zero right here. That tells you that the first partition is on zero. That's the jump from the first function to the second function around here. It stops at zero and this one continues from zero. The second uh, partition or break happens at three. So function number two stops at three and function three continues from three. So what does that look like? Well, we're going to partition our our uh, coordinate system are playing into three into three sections. Okay, the first section will be partitioned along this uh, this line, y equals zero. I mean x equals zero, and then the next one is along the line x equals three, one two three. You can write down your partition. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so what on earth does this mean? This basically means that uh, function one should be restricted to this. Half, uh, space right here. This space is for function number one, and then function number two should be restricted to this tiny region right here when I'm graphing it, and then function three should be restricted to this entire uh, region right here. Okay, all right, so let's keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and start with function number one. Function one is f of x equals one third x minus one. So this line. The slope is 1 over 3, which means we're going to rise 1 and run 3. And we're starting from the y-intercept, negative 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and graph that. So we we'll start from negative 1. That's right here. So we're going to rise. We're going to rise 1 and run 3. Or we can do the reverse, which is go down 1 and back up 1, 2, 3. Same thing. Go down 1 and back 1, 2, 3. Alright, so that that's gonna be the lines for my um for, that define my first function. Notice how I'm putting my points in this region right here, go down one back three. Alright. So uh, when I draw my line, I'm going to oh boy, wrong kind of line. I need a solid line here. So start from here and then go back right there. Okay. Now the question is where this line touches the partition, is it an included dot or not? Does this line include the partition? So we need to look at this inequality. You see that there's a line underneath there. So since there's a line underneath there, that means where this line hits, this partition is included, so you have a full circle like that. Okay? So there goes the first line. Now let's move on to the second one. Uh, we have f of x equals 1. So this is a flat line. Uh, the slope for this line obviously is uh, zero. So I um, 
and the run is 1, and then you're starting from the y-intercept, which is 1. So in this case, you never rise, you just keep running one unit forever. Our graph is going to be restricted to um, this tiny region right here. So we're going to start from 1, and then there's no rise, you just keep running, running one unit. So no rise, run, no rise, run, no rise, run. Okay, so you have this horizontal line. You see how it's restricted to, to this inequality between 0 and 3? So the, your lines can go out of this region, all right? So let me go ahead and draw the connecting lines for this region. I'm going to leave some space between where it hits the line, okay? Between the graph and where it hits the line. All right, now let's look at the two endpoints. On the left endpoint, there isn't any line under this inequality right here, so that means it's excluded, so you have to have an open circle here. And on the right side, there isn't any line on the here, so you also have an open circle. Okay? So this is what you have. This is line 2, restricted to region 2. Now let's go ahead and take a look at line 3. Line 3, we have the function f of x equals 1 third x plus 4. Your slope is 1 over 3, which basically means you're going to rise 1. Um, actually, let me change this problem. Let's make this a minus right here, so it comes out. So put a minus here, so it's negative. Sorry about that. All right, so make that negative. Just change the problem a little bit. So uh, if that were negative, that means this will be negative. This slope here will be negative. And your, your y-intercept B is going to be 4. Okay? So how do we graph that? So to graph that, you're going to start from 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 on your y-axis. And then you're going to rise 1, negative 1, which means you go down 1, and you run 1, 2, 3. Do that again. Rise 1, run 1, 2, 3. Go down 1, run 1, 2, 3. Okay, the more points you have, the more accurate your graph will be, okay? So let's go ahead and draw, draw the line. So I'm going to draw it like this. Go oh, ahead. Try it again. So starting from here. All right. Now I'm going to shift the line a little bit to the right and ask myself, does this line include the partition? Does it include x equals 3? To answer that question, I'll take a look at um, the inequality. So x is greater than or equal to 3. So this line right here means that the partition is included, so I'll draw a sort of circle in here, and there you have it. So see how I restricted line 3 to region 3? I restricted line 2 to region 2, and then I restricted line 1 to region 1. Alright? Okay, so there goes um, the graph of, of the part of your, of your inequality. Alright? Now let me just have, put some add-ons here. So what if you were at number 3, you asked to evaluate Evaluate the following using the function. Evaluate the following. Let's say you asked to find um, 3a f of negative 1, and then you asked to find f of 2, and then you asked to find f of 3. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So if I want to evaluate f of negative 1, all I simply do is uh, ask myself, which function am I going to use? Negative 1 falls in which region? Region 1, 2, or 3. Negative 1 clearly falls in region 1, right? So that means I'm going to use the first function. So a is going to be f of, f of uh, negative 1. We're going to be using the first function. So f of uh, negative 1 is going to be, um, one third times negative one minus one, which equals negative one third minus one, which equals negative one and the third. All right, so there you have it. Now for f of two, if you're looking at two, what function uh, is is two restricted to? So if you look at the inequalities, we notice that two is going to be. Uh, with function number 2, because 2 is between 0 and 3. You can see here 2 is right here between 0 and 3. So f of 2 
is simply going to be 1. Because for any, re for any x value between 0 and 3, your output is always going to be 1. It's independent of what your x is. Okay? Alright, so f of 3 falls on the boundary. So the question is, is it 2, function 2, or function 3 that wins? We know that on the boundary, function 2 is excluded. But function 3 is included, so we're going to use function 3. Alright? Because function 3 is 3 and anything bigger. So we have 3, so we have to use function 3. So f of 3 is going to be 1 third times negative 1 third, let's not forget that, times 3 plus 4. Okay? And then when we work that out, we're going to have um, negative 1 plus 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And there goes your output. Okay? Another way to look at it um, is you can just, let's say you didn't have a graph and you wanted to do these, you can just draw a line like this and then put in your partitions. Your partitions are at 0 and 3. And then just put in your function. So for this one, f of x equals 1. For, for this one, from here to here, oh, that's supposed to go. Oh. So from there to there. And then from here all the way down, we're going to use f of x equals negative one third x plus 4. And then from here all the way down, going to use a function uh, f of x equals one third x minus one. So this basically, this is another way to do uh, part three. If you don't have the graph, it just tells you that if you're less than zero, use this function. If you're between zero and three, excluding these two points, use this function. And if you're bigger than three, go ahead and use this function. Okay? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel just by clicking up here. Uh, and also share it and share the contents of this video via Facebook or Twitter. More videos can be found on myclosetype.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.